Right then, update number two on our build of this uh, GMC Bofus truck. Um, we are now in the point where we're starting to work through step four. So I think um, at the last update we'd completed step one. Um, and we're about to set out on step two. So we've done two, three, and four. So just talk you through that a little bit, and then I'll show you some of the things that we did. So um, basically, there is quite a lot of bits and pieces gone into this since. The main thing being that we've got the suspension on. Um, uh, we've got the exhaust on. We opened up the exhaust a little bit. Um, it did have an indent in, but just needed drilling out a little bit. Uh, we had some ejector pins that we, uh, marks that we've had to fill in the uh, bumper at the front there uh, uh, and at the side. Um, we've had to form some photo etch and put that on, and I'll show you how we did that in a minute. Um, uh, and the rest of it has been quite straightforward. The winch here... Um, there's the, the instructions say put the rope on, um, but I won't be doing that until um, a fair bit later on, actually. So, um, yeah. So we're, we're sort of working through it uh, quite nicely. Um, clean up in places is a bit heavier than you'd expect. A lot of little fiddly pieces, really. Um, um, and fit sometimes is a bit less than positive <laughs> i think is the best way of saying it but it's all generally going together okay um making sure that we've got these nice and straight and aligned um I, I, i'll show you how i did that in a minute with a photograph um but yeah so we are working on this part now i've just done that bit um, you can see that that's gone in. So it's these other three drive shafts next. Then we've got some more bits going on the suspension um, and then suspension at the front. Um, and that's when we sort of, we'll have some parts that go in that we're not going to add on. So the, the hook for the rope and what have you. Um, step five is wheels. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do about wheels. Um, probably I'll build them up so that they're ready for painting. Um, and then we're on to step six um, and the cabin. So looking forward to that. And my aim continues to be to get this all built up into sub-assemblies ready for painting in its um, olive drab colours. So let me show you how we tackled doing forming this photo etch right photo etch we've got some bending to do of this part there's no guidelines for this there is a, a, a sort of template um, or shape guide in the instructions uh, so we need to um, anneal that but before we do that um, you can see I've taken the film off um, I absolutely hate this stuff um, it's completely pointless it doesn't really add much in the way of protection to your photo etch and it leaves a load of dirt and stains on it so the best way to clean it up is actually uh, white vinegar uh, the domestic stuff that you can buy you know um, it's it's just a nice quick simple way of doing it and actually it does two things when you were uh, when you clean it with white vinegar it it degreases for a start which is um, always a good place to be. Um, but also, um, it's slightly etching the metal. So it acts as a sort of a pre-primer, if you like, and helps uh, helps anything key to it. So you see, you can see some uh, muck on this part here. And if we just rub it with the white vinegar, you can see how that cleans up. And then you can just leave it to flash off. Um, so I generally, uh, especially if it's been covered in this horrible film stuff, they, they, 
Chinese manufacturers put on. I, I guess it all comes from one factory somewhere, but you can just leave that uh, to, to flash off. Just give it a bit of a rub um, and that degreases and it sort of etch primes at the same time. So it's a nice, quick, easy way of sorting out that. And you can do it as many times as you like. So uh, I've just taken some fingerprints off there. Um, so the grease from your fingers um, as well, it'll remove. So uh, yeah, it's a good way of cleaning up your product. Just remember, you've had the film on both sides. Um, and it, you know, the, the film just gets in the way of glue and paint and all sorts of stuff. And if you don't believe me about how dirty your photo etch can, can get, I've only done some of these parts, you just have to look at that. So if you've got big frets, then put some vinegar in a, in a shallow tray, just drop it in for a minute, give it a rub. You don't have to give it a rub with um, a cotton board. You can use a, uh, a bit of very soft sponge. Uh, just be careful you don't snag any of the parts or even get it off, shape, uh, shake it down and give it a gentle rub with a paper towel, whatever suits you. But white vinegar, definitely the way to go for cleaning it um, because unlike other things like IPA uh, and what have you, the, the vinegar, like I say, just etches into that metal a little bit, which is really helpful um, and it degreases uh, really well as well. So yeah, uh, that's what I generally do with with all of my uh, photo etch. Uh, when I start is I clean it up and then if needs be, I'll clean it up again. Um, I don't need to use one of these. The, the trouble with one of these is it scratches. If I was soldering it, uh, I, I might clean up the area where I'm going to solder with it. Just depends. Um, but I tr tend not to use this on photo etch as much as possible. Um, because it does leave um, scratches in and, and bits and pieces like that. And that can sometimes uh, affect your paint. So I prefer not to unless I have to. Okay, photo etch time. We've cleaned it. We've got to make it conform to this shape. They've given us a shape for left and right, but essentially it's the same shape. Uh, what we have to be mindful of is these belt details at the bottom, um, they have to be the right way around. So first thing we need to do is anneal the part. I tend to use a tea light for annealing um, because uh, it's hands-free um, and it's fairly safe. And I also use the tea light for things like cleaning the super glue off my uh, glue applicator so I can I can just dip my glue applicator in and burn off any any glue so it's uh, I use it um, fairly regularly probably at least um, once a week um, and if I'm doing a lot of photo etch like on a ship or something like that um, I can do quite a bit of annealing as well now uh, I prefer to anneal on uh, keeping it on the fret um, my experience is taking it off the fret Sometimes, it depends on the photo etch, can lead to the photo etch bending. So having it um, uh, still attached can be really helpful. Um, how long you need? Um, well, until it changes color, as you can see there. That's it, that's done now. Um, you don't need to do it any longer than that. Uh, and it really depends on your photo etch. Even though a lot of photo etch is referred to as brass photo etch, um, quite a bit of it, particularly uh, the stuff made by the trumpeter um, companies, Hobby Bass Trumpeter and so on, um, they, they tend to be a, a brass alloy and are a bit softer. So, yeah, you can see that's all I need to do to make that soft. My only other comment really on the annealing process is that um, I tend to use tweezers which have got these um, handles. So uh, if I'm doing a lot of annealing, a big sheet or something like that, um, 
then the heat's not going to transfer up the tweezers to my fingers. So uh, that's just another thing to consider. But on a small job like that, you can see it's not really an issue. So there we have it. And that should be cool now. Yeah. So we don't need to worry about that. So the next job is to remove the parts. So next thing to do is to remove the part. I um, yeah, I recommend you do it on a flat surface. I do know some people do it on cutting mats. I used to, um, and then I deformed a part on a cutting mat and learned the error of my ways, so I tend not to. Um, but uh, it doesn't really matter as long as it's a hard surface and you can cut against it. If it's got a little bit of give in it, um, then uh, that's better for your knife blade. Uh, your knife blade will just last a bit longer before you have to sharpen it. This is actually uh, a sample of Corian, which is this stuff that you see in used in hotel rooms to make sinks and things like that. It is uh, uh, a sample I got many many years ago uh, in a in a job I was doing actually. Um, but I mean uh, anything that's flat. Uh, and relatively hard and it isn't going to give will do i know people use back of, uh, old cds and um, back of cutting mats and all sorts of uh, all sorts of stuff so tiles that sort of thing i use um, a knife that's been modified to a chisel tip so i can go in directly above it um, i don't i don't want to be dragging the gate or anything like that Again, you can deform the parts, so it's just a matter of cutting through it. Um, so having a, a chisel tip, this is a number 11 blade that I've modified to a chisel tip. Having a chisel tip means that I can go in straight and not have to worry about... There you go. Uh, not have to worry about uh, damaging the part. So you could see me sort of rocking it. All I'm doing is I'm using the corner of the blade to find the gate and then I level the knife up and then I press down to cut the part. There you go. Uh, and that gets me almost no clean up. So locate, position, press. There we go, and we can put the rest of that photo touch away. Right, so don't need that cutting block anymore, or this knife. Uh, we do need to just do a little bit of clean up. So, just using a thousand grit on a fairly hard sanding sponge, and it's not really spongy at all. There we go, that's nicely cleaned up. Now you don't need to worry about cleaning the part up or anything like that. If anything, that's more authentic to the original build process. Um, having worked in a, a, a company that makes a kit for militaries around the world, I know exactly what they look like before they get painted. And they look much more like that than nice shiny parts before they get cleaned up. So, um, yeah, that's probably more authentic. Right, okay, what we're going to do 
is we're going to start by putting um, the start of our curves in. Now it's actually a surprisingly complex little shape this because we've got a bit of a curve we've got to do we've got the bend and we've got um, a backwards bend so one bend going in a different direction to the other so it's a little bit or could be a little bit tricky what we're going to do though is we're going to um, locate the part like that so we know we've got the right part and then if we put it on there I can mark that up with my bend position. Actually, if we turn it the other way around, that would be better because it's an inside bend. So my bend is starting there. So I'm just going to put a very, very tiny start bending that's all i'm doing then if we do the same from this way That's where our bend is there. And then we've got a bend that's going to have to come from the outside. Mark that. There we go. Right, so that's all my bends sort of pointed out on the material. Let's move that out of the way for a sec. And we've got to form a, a, a gentle sort of curve on this centre section. So I'm going to do that first. Um, so I'm just gently pressing while rolling onto the inside of the part. So you can see I've now got a curve. So let's compare that to our curve on there. Not far off, not far off. So our first bend is this one. So let's get that one in. Okay, so I don't want the uh, the curve to be too sharp, but at the same time, I've got two drill bits there. At the same time, I don't want it to be um, too curved. So what we're going to do is we're going to use um, a drill bit just to form the curve a little bit. So it's really difficult because you've got this lump sticking out. You can't just put it on the on there. So I'm actually using this one. I mean, the shape's the same. It's just the opposite side. Right. So we need a little bit more of uh, a curve in this piece here. That's not far off at all. So right. 
I'm just going to start the curve and then we can get our drill bit. Bend that over. Check that we're still flat. Yeah. So if you don't anneal the part, what happens is you get you don't take the spring out of the metal so it's constantly springing back on you right now this part needs to curve in a little bit and then we've got this kick out which actually i've folded the wrong way so let's just correct that now while we can Okay, we are getting there. Okay, slightly over bent now. And what I can do is I can use some flat nose pliers and just correct that. Um, there we go, that looks like it's pretty much spot on so if i put that over this side yeah so let's have a look at how that sits on our plastic part so it goes on this end here um, like so so that looks pretty okay to me so there you go that is how to form that part. The key is annealing it so that you've taken all of the spring out of the part and it holds its shape. Um, and just that gentle roll, don't be leaving that flat. It needs to have a gentle curve on it. Um, t start, your, start your curves and then finish them with the right diameter um rod it doesn't have to be a drill bit but it needs to be uh, something that's fairly hard and a drill bit just perfectly fits the bill and most of us have a drill bit so that's the tool i'd recommend okay i will get the other one done and then we will glue them in place okay um we're gonna put this photo etch on now i'm using a uh, flat Flexi 5K CA, um, which is a black CA from VMS. Um, I've heard good things about it. This is the first time I've used it. It's a slow drying CA, so that can be helpful under certain circumstances. Um, but I'm interested as much as anything just to see how it behaves. So let's uh, get that right. So put some on here so 
It's a slow drying, but that took fairly quickly, didn't it? Now, this is the bit that's going to be interesting. Okay, that seems to have held in place okay. And just belt and brace is going to just apply a little bit on this side as well. And then whilst that's drying, we can get some glue onto this part and get that added on. Okay. Whoops. That's loosened itself, hasn't it? Let's uh, tighten that back up. No harm done. There we go. I'm just going to hold that in place and put a bit of glue on the outside seam as well. And we can sand the glue down if needs be there we go so that is those photo etched bumpers on they look fairly good to me i'm happy with that um, and that completes everything now in step two uh, done the box done that done that done that done that done that done that so the only thing i've not done in step two is add the um rope that goes on the winch but obviously we want to do that after spray painting the winch actually spins which is a nice little touch and that'll be really handy when we come to glue this on even when it's painted it'll still twist because uh, the mech the pins are hidden inside the plastic parts so we shouldn't have any issues with that so that is step two complete i can cross that out and that gets us to step three so uh usually this means lots of fix seam and and horrible cleanup on uh on leaf springs so let's have a look at them and do that next I think well actually as leaf springs go these aren't too bad um, but I need to take more care with the cleanup of these than I have done the other part so far because we're now at the point where bits are going to become more visible than previously so these will get cleaned up properly 
So that's how the photo etcher is done. Um, and I'll share a photograph with you uh, now, just showing you how I made sure all of this was flat. This was really tricky. This was really tricky. These weren't really sitting straight. This is very loose. Um, you've got to connect these. So you, you, you've got things folding down in that direction um, at this point because it, it was all a fairly loose fit. Then you're trying to connect two up. You've got all that moving. Very, very fiddly. So you end up gluing those in. The trick was to align these two um, points that come down with the rivets um, so that you knew they were square. Then glue the first one in uh, and get that all straight. Then put your drive shaft um, in loose, then put that in. All of these uh, drive shaft connectors were loose. And then once you got it lined up, you just sort of glued it all in. Uh, on the basis that you've just tacked it in and you can always put a bit more glue in and uh, loosen it up again and move it if needs be. I didn't need to, um, but it was a bit fiddly. That's probably the, the most fiddly bit that we've had to do so far. Um, but yeah, progressing quite nicely, I think. So yeah, happy with that. So here's the picture of us balancing um, the hubs. And that is pretty much my update for um, for now. So I will aim to do another um, update for Thursday uh, next week. Hopefully we'll have ploughed on with it then. I'm just doing it in my spare time when I have got get a moment. Um, I've cut one or two corners. I've not done ejector pins within the chassis and stuff. I know I should, um, but I'm just trying to do this one at pace and quite frankly you ain't gonna see it so yeah um, yeah really happy with how it's coming together um, not been too challenging as yet right thanks for looking in you enjoy your modeling and stay tuned for um, the big live build tomorrow at uh, 9 p.m uk time with live chat with me and uh, many of my subscribers um, I look forward to seeing you there for what I think will be Ferret Part 2.